Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about a cache property in the context of the main table of a controller or what we call the form. This is mostly relevant to UI controller, so let's go ahead and play with that. Let's add a new item, UI controller, and let's call it from cache demo. Okay, we're going to grab the orders table here. And we're going to say form equals orders. Cool. Then we switch over to the designer, create a nice little grid. And on the grid, place a few columns just because we can. Cool. And just like before, let's call it from the on start of our application with profiling so we can see what's going on. So form cache demo. So notice that we ran this a, a screen and the screen opened up and we're going to do several operations. First of all, we're going to open up like we just did and then we're going to do scroll down, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we iterated across four more rows. Let's see what it shows in the profile. Okay, so we can see that the orders table was called twice. Once to table exists, which we know and we know how to remove if we don't want that. And next to get all the rows on start and we can see that the fetch hook was called 16 times, but only one fetch actually went to the database. Okay? And if we look at it, we see how it operates. Let's do the same thing now, now but also use the dbdebug monitor. It allows us to see in the output windows the actual select statements that go to the database. Okay? So we're going to go to Northwind, Properties, and say dbdebug. If you want more information on these flags, we have it on our website. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction. So we opened it. Let's put it to the right, and let's put over here the output window on the right, as opposed to that one which was on the left. So when we ran it, we have the select table from orders with the order by, okay, and a single fetch command went to the database to get 40 rows. Okay, let's make a more elaborate order by. So we'll go over to from cache demo and say order by add orders for customers, orders today, and orders of order ID, and let's say also that it's unique. Okay, that way we just use that. Perfect. So when we run our online screen and scroll through several rows, we can see in the output window the select statement with the order by and with the fetch of 40 rows. Now, as we continue here, until we reach the first 40 rows, no query will be sent to the database. Only once we reach 40 rows, you can see another fetch being executed to get the next 40 rows. This is the correct behavior. This is the behavior that you get, which in my view is correct, when you say cache true. Okay? So to get this behavior, you do it when you use cache true. Let's see what happens when you have cache false for a form of a controller. Okay, we're going to go here to the orders definition and say cached equals false. Let's see what happens now. So we open the screen and haven't done anything, but now we can see in our output windows a lot more commands that went to the database. First of all, the original select is just the same. But afterwards, we have a lot of SPCars or fetch commands, every time getting one row. Okay, so the first difference that you get when you say cache no, is that instead of fetching 40 rows from the database in a single handshake, it will fetch the rows one by one. Okay, so let's go ahead and close it and look at the profile now, and we can see that the fetch was called 16 times, and for each and every one of those times, it gets 16 SQL commands. Okay, remember when this was set to cache true, we only get one SQL command for the first 40 rows, and then 40 after, and then 40 after. Great, so that's the first difference. So let's try to write it down. When we talk about from cache, okay, so when set to false, which is the, the abnormal, okay, it will fetch the rows from the cursor one by one, okay, when 
fetch the tool, it will fetch it for the edit time. Okay, that's one thing it is. Another major behavior, another major difference, okay, have a look now. When we run it again, okay, and we'll have a look at the output window. Okay, let's clear it. Whenever we we'll go down one row on the grid, it will go ahead and fetch that row from the database based on the sequence. Okay, so when cache set to false, whenever we're about to park on a row, we re-get it from the database. Okay, now you may think that it's weird, but there's a good explanation for that. Let me tell you about it in a second. So when set to false, whenever we park on a row on a grid, it will reload that row from the database. Now it's actually important and some applications are actually counting on it. We actually had cases in projects where a, a, a controller, we call a child controller, it updates the rows that you're parked on, a simulated keyboard stroke of up and down, counting on the fact that when I return to the row, it will reload it from the database with the new values. So that happens quite a lot and you'll see that in those cases. So <laughs> remember that that's why it's happening. And one other difference, and, and I think pretty much less significant one, is that when I go back to the first row, okay, and click up, click the up arrow, like this, it will generate a very complicated select statement with a lot of order bytes trying to find the previous row, okay? Because when we're saying cache false, we actually mean we don't trust in memory, we put our trust in the database, and we ask the database everything. So if you're looking to a previous row that doesn't exist in memory, we're going to ask the database, please confirm that there are no more rows. Okay, so you see that select statement that goes and tries to get the rows that is before the first row. So all of this is what's relevant when you're using a cache on the form. Of course, a recommendation, try to always use cache on the form. We really turn it off in very, very extreme cases. In general, we're saying use cache as much as you can. Try to reduce the back and forth communication between you and the database. It's wasteful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.